postseason. Caden Henry, the freshman, leads off for Texas. Oklahoma State trying to take the series in game two. The Longhorns looking to even the set. And this game begins with ball one. Here is the starting lineup for Texas, coached by Mike White. Freshman of the one and seven spots, Henry and Stewart. The transfer, Jolie Mitchell, batting third, has been superb. And Reese Atwood in the cleanup spot, the nation's leader in RBIs. It is as deep and talented a lineup as there is in college softball. And I'm not even sure we have to caveat it with this side of Oklahoma because Texas steps, stacks up very favorably with Oklahoma in terms of the national rankings. The numbers one and two teams in the country. Henry will take ball three, and the freshman in a plum position to start the game against Acock. Caden Henry looking to snap out of an 0 for 10 following an absurdly hot 10 game hit streak. Went 19 for 36 over the span of. The previous 10 games, and she still leads the Big 12 in steals and is third in hits in her first collegiate year. Such a good combination of both speed and power. That one's a little high from Acock, and no swing, according to Chad Steer, is at third. So a leadoff walk issued. Acock with the shades in the circle. And his seven local start. Ball one up high to Mia Scott. Scott, the junior, has reached base 20 consecutive games and 29 of 32 this season. One of the most patient, one of the best contact hitters in the league. That's low, a delayed steal attempt for Henry, who hesitated and still made it to second base. On the ball in the dirt. It's a good read there by Henry, and that is what makes this Texas offense so solid, so consistent, so tough to go up against because they have the speed. She reads that ball down, easily is able to get to second base when Texas is eight. 2 0 for Scott. See if the visit pays off. It does not immediately. Acock with 21 walks on the year, 56 innings, about two and a half walks per seven. And she walks the first two of the game. Henry and Scott are on. It's first and second, nobody out for the heart of this Longhorn lineup. And immediately, Oklahoma State. It's the bullpen cooking. Ivy Rosenberry is out there, and you feel, feel like the leash will not be long for Acock today, given the strength of this lineup. Jolie Mitchell, number three hitter. There's the first pitch strike, as deemed by Chelsea Clark. Already saw Chad Steers at third. Terry Holt is our umpire down at first tonight. Notre Dame transfer Mitchell has been one of the nation's Best players so far. Fourth in Division One in batting average, sixth in on base percentage, third in the Big 12 in steals, and fourth in doubles. These are staggering numbers in her first year coming over from Notre Dame. One and one. Mitchell shows butt again and takes a low strike two. Jolie Mitchell has just been described by Mike White as gritty, a quiet force, and he just loves the way she competes and tough with two strikes, too, that competitor at her heart in the box. And with two strikes, to foul a tight pitch off. By the way, the official scoring decision, Caden Henry advancing to second on a passed ball which you never see given on a pitch in the dirt typically, but that's the decision for now. There is Mike White, man in charge of the Longhorns, year six. And it's these lower pitches right now, Kevin, I think it's her drop ball that are just 
not competitive to the first three hitters that she's facing. She's having to bring up her fastball and hit a corner, and she's had the most success, at least to Mitchell, with her inside fastball at the knees. Another one down, and that will enable Henry to get to third. So well, Kane Henry takes second on a ball in the dirt. She takes third on a ball in the dirt as well, Amanda. And they're not just powerful Texas. They are aggressive. Well, and I feel like Texas's dugout right now is a team that smells blood in the water about how Kyra Acock has lacked command early in this game. They are loud. You can hear them every pitch talking to Jolie Mitchell. Mitchell drives the ball into the gap. Texas has the game's first run. Scott will go to third, stop right there. Mitchell is in the second. A run scoring double for Jolie Mitchell, who's reached base in 19 consecutive games and gives the Longhorns the lead. And Kenny Gajewski is going to challenge maybe to see if one of the base runners left early. A two strike hitting by Jolie Mitchell to potentially drive in this run if everything holds as is. This is a new rule this season. You can challenge whether a runner left early. That's not a new rule, whether a runner leaves a base early, but that play being reviewable is a new wrinkle to the rule book. Let's look at the runners, particularly Scott at first. Looked like that's where Kenny was pointing. Does she leave before the ball's out of the hand of Acock? And on that frame, it does look like she does because ball is in Acock's hand right there and she leaves. This is this this rule that you're able to review this year has <laughs> just been so tough to swallow and has been a bit of the gotcha card for a lot of coaches on a hit like this. And this is not anything against Kenny Gajewski or any coach who uses this because with the rules as they are this year. It's a massive break. So the count will go back to three and two. Henry at third. Scott out at first. Score at three unassisted for leaving early. So here's a 3-2 after all that. And there will be another 3-2 after all that. Good job with that traffic. <laughs> That's well, a lot again, look, going on. We told you these games are always weird. I mean, Texas and Oklahoma State always have something insane happen. And we've already had a couple of insane things happen. One before the game and one in the first inning. Another 3-2. That is a called third strike. Mitchell down looking as Acock blazes one over the outside edge. Well, and we said earlier in the count that Kyra Acock was just painting the inside corner but struggled to throw away. And that's the pitch that she goes to when really so much is on the line. Full count hits that outside corner for the looking K. Maybe that review is exactly what Acock needed. A little bit of time to catch her breath to just be able to get back into this game. So out of nowhere, it's two outs, no runs in, and Reese Atwood at the plate. And a first pitch swing down to third for Reese Atwood. Oklahoma State gets out of it. The throw from third from Talon Edwards ends a bizarre. And she'll face the freshman Rosie Davis to start. Oklahoma State's at bat tonight begins with a Strike to Davis, a freshman second baseman, one of three freshman starters, one of seven freshmen or sophomores in the starting nine for Kenny Gajewski's Cowgirls. Here is a full lineup for Oklahoma State. If you haven't watched an Oklahoma State game since last year, a lot of unfamiliar names. But a lot of stars in the making. Carly Godwin started every game. Caroline Wong, the transfer from Liberty behind her, has been a superb power hitter. There's a real rejuvenation, Amanda, around this program. Four straight trips to the World Series, but they lost a lot of players who had given Oklahoma State a lot. But they feel like there's a little bit of a sense of a lack of pressure in some ways. The expectations are still high, but the vibes are really good around this young team. 
I think for the past several years, ever since Oklahoma State won the Super Regional back in 2019 with Sam Shaw, and then they were just a mainstay at the Women's College World Series. That core group of Oklahoma State players just, I think, started to feel the pressure every single year to get back. Davis with a ground ball squirreled out to short. Vivi Martinez throws her out there. Texas can really bash, they can steal bases, they can pitch. They are not great defensively, and they have not been great defensively in the Mike White era, though there are great athletes and terrific speed all over this field. Reese Atwood, designated player today, gets the day off for the field, so the freshman Katie Stewart will work with Gutierrez. Talon Edwards, number two hitter for Oklahoma State. And one of three cowgirl home runs in the 5 nothing win last night. And I think, Kevin, you could kind of tell that pressure that Oklahoma State felt last year when you watched them play. We called their Super Regional and had them a good bit down in, in the month of April and then also in May and, of course, at the World Series. And just felt like a team that just wasn't having as much fun playing the game. But this team, because of all the new faces and different pieces and different spots on defense and all throughout their order, it's just no expectation, having fun, playing the game nice and loose, and still having the results to go along with it. I mean, they're ranked in the top 10, have only lost five games all year. They go with the front. How about that back control by Edwards? Just a little half swing, if that volleyed down the left field line for a two-strike single. Yeah, you say bat control and just kind of her bat <laughs> runs into this ball that's down in the zone. So using every single inch of that third baseline, she hit a home run in last night's game, one of the three players to hit a home run last night, and then something out of that one. Here's one of the others, Carly Godwin, who takes ball one. Only player to start all 34 for Oklahoma State this year. Slugging at six. The game like they did last night and kept that momentum rolling throughout the game. Godwin part of this terrific freshman class for Oklahoma State. And a Lake Waccamaw, North Carolina. RBI in seven of her last nine. And another one low from Gutierrez, who is a ground ball machine with that drop ball. Pretty much everything has been down in the zone so far. Looks different look from Tegan Kavan, last night's game one starter. And when she's working that drop ball, it's such a good pitch for her. She throws her drop ball about 70% of the time. And because she keeps the ball lower in the zone, she's so difficult to create any bit of lift and find alley. She's only given up three home runs this year, six extra base hits total in the 40 innings that she's pitched. Keeps the ball on the ground and a lot of singles against her. A ball blistered in the left field, a base hit for Godwin. Carly Godwin is three for five in this series. And Oklahoma State has back-to-back -back hits in the first. Their approach at the plate looked so good last night from right out of the gate. We'll see Godwin go down and get this pitch. We just talked about how Gutierrez likes to throw more low in the zone. You could tell that her posture, her getting her barrel down to that pitch, she's looking for something down. And that's what stood out to me about Oklahoma State's at bats. They face Tegan Kavan, more of a rise ball pitcher early in the game. They're getting their barrel up to her rise ball. Mac Morgan came in, more of a drop ball pitcher. That ball was up. Caroline Wong hits it off the glove of Gutierrez. Edwards rounded third has to get back to the bag and scrambles in safely. Those last two pitches were seared off the Oklahoma State bats and Wong single loads the bases. Yeah, and this one is just a big time mistake. You see Katie Stewart 
setting up on the outside corner. That pitch was right down the middle of the plate, and that's exactly where Wong hit it right back up the middle of the field, hit it where it's pitched. More clear, Tim. <laughs> strike one, and we are seeing a pitcher-friendly strike zone for drop ball specialists, a lower zone right now. We've seen on a couple of called strikes from Chelsea Clark. Bodes well for both of the pitchers, both of the starting pitchers with Acock and Gutierrez, both pitchers that like to work more low in the zone. Blair Tim's first plate appearance with the bases loaded this season. Sophomore from Buena Park, California, will swing away. Line one in the center right at Henry. Edwards tags from third. Edwards scores the game's first run. It is Oklahoma State on the board first as Claire Tim gets herself out of an 0-2 hole with a sacrifice fly. The two strike hitting for Oklahoma State within this inning. Remember, Talon Edwards had a two strike hit to start this rally and then for Tim to get down with two strikes and create a sacrifice fly to score the first run of this game. Good AB by Tim. Just, can you just feel how good Oklahoma State's at bats are? It just feels smothering going back to last night's game whenever they shut out Texas and scored five runs and creating or using that momentum from last night already into this first inning. Their at bats look so good. Oklahoma State this season 26 and two in scoring first. And there's a low strike called to Michaela Wart. Which leads to some unrest in the Cowgirl dugout. Kenny Gajewski is going to have an early word with Chelsea Clark. And he's going to have a couple of more words with a plate up fire, in fact. Maybe looked a little bit low, but she's, to your point, has been calling a lower strike zone. Kayla Work had a big night yesterday. Doubled a homer, drove in three of the five runs. Redshirt sophomore in her second year after transferring from Kansas. <laughs> Looks like Kenny Gajewski was officially assessed a warning for arguing that. Strike two call. He is down to third for another 0 2. Work on the ground to shortstop. Not fielded cleanly by Martinez. And E6 is going to reload the bases. It's just a play that is, has to be made if you're Texas to get out of the inning and. It, Pretty easy couple of hops, too. At Martina, she sat back on her heels, and Oklahoma State has the pieces loaded again. Texas had a real big opportunity to get out of the inning. Viviana Martinez with her ninth error of the season at short. She has had some ups and downs defensively in her couple of years in Austin. Very talented player, but a fielding percentage of just 924 coming in, and her error. Maintains the inning for Katie Lott. Lott was perfect at the plate last night. Two for two of the walk. Just her ninth start of the season. She's made them count. Strike one. only the second time all season Lot has started back-to-back -back games and a big spot in the opening inning she will take another strike 
lot of counts and times that Gutierrez has had two strikes in this inning and been able to been unable to put away quite a few of these hitters. She needs to make a pitch right here. A 2-2 on the way. A lot with a ground ball. Another chance for Martinez. And this one, she aces. Of strikes. Like, they don't chase a lot out of the strike zone when they're hitting their best. Walk a lot. Don't strike out a ton either. So just make it tough for a pitcher and a defense to go up against. And we mentioned this in the first inning, but just their collection of both power and speed all throughout their lineup. This is Viviana Martinez, the shortstop, grounding the ball to third. Nice snatch there by Talon Edwards, the converted outfielder with a nifty play at the hot corner. Just really good range over at third base and made some great plays last night. Oklahoma State defensively last night in game one just collectively made such great plays back behind Lexi Kilfoyle, a drop ball pitcher. And another ground ball to the left side. This one wide of Edwards. The first year shortstop, Bloodworth. That is a She's... reworked left side of the infield, and they've looked very good so far. Well, and I was going to say that Talon Edwards is so quick that she, that was a routine ground ball to shortstop, but she had such a good beat on it, a good jump off the bat, a good read, that she almost was able to even cut that one off because she's so fast. Oklahoma State defensively. Kenny Gajewski didn't feel like they were playing very well, but they are 12th in the nation in fielding percentage. 979 coming into the game. That's a hallmark of his teams. Kenny Gajewski is assisted for a couple of years at Florida under Tim Walton. And if you know anything about Florida softball, you know they are always among the nation's elite defensive teams. So Kenny Gajewski has brought that to Stillwater. His teams are not always Big boppers. They have often won with pitching and defense, but they have great power to complement that this year. Batter is Katie Stewart. Flares an 0-2 to second. So every infielder gets involved in this inning as Rosie Davis catches a pop-up. Six pitches, a clean second. Come together. It's a younger staff, part of a younger team. Megan Bloodworth, first pitch swinging. Megan Bloodworth gets in on the hit parade. And the ball booted by Henry. That will allow Bloodworth to get into second base standing. Well, just a 169 hitter, Megan Bloodworth, but a very aggressive start to the second. Aggressive early in the count. First pitch that she sees, she's able to drive it to the outfield. Another bobble out there by Caden Henry that likely Bloodworth would have gotten into second base anyway, but when Texas is showing signs of struggle on defense. You want to clean every single part of your defense up. Those little bobbles just make everybody feel a little bit tighter, even if it didn't lead to an extra 60 feet necessarily. It is a double for Bloodworth, her second of the year. And here's Taylor Anderson squaring around in the ninth spot. Anderson lays down a butte of a butt. She is retired. At first, that she gets the job done as Bloodworth moves to third. <laughs> Sacrifice punt for Anderson is her first of her career, and here's Davis with the Texas infield in. Rosie Davis has had nearly impossible shoes to fill. And there's the infield she faces, replacing an All-American at second base. Right back to the circle. Gutierrez to the plate. And did Stewart get it off in time? Yes, she did. Davis to second. And she's out there. It's a double play. One Big 12 rival for now, just down the road, is the other. Well, Kyra Aycock has thrown 10 straight strikes since a runner left early, which you knew was going to lead to a pitch in the dirt. But the point stands that Kyra Aycock has looked like a different pitcher 
since Jolie Mitchell's RBI double was wiped away after Mia Scott left first early. Nasty Maloney takes ball two. It was a second and third nobody out situation after an RBI double for Mitchell. Walk, walk, RBI double. Kenny Gajewski challenged. Mia Scott was ruled to have left first early. So that was an out. Then Acock struck out Mitchell and got a reset one on ground out. But now it looks like she did in the first inning. This is how, you know, the year is kind of gone for Kyra Acock. One inning to the next, she could look lights out and like she's going to get everybody out. And then she can have these moments where the inning just can get away from her. A hitter can just get, a, get away from her like this. That one really got away from her. Her third walk of the game, Ashton Maloney, the sophomore, is on. So Texas without a hit, but three walks against Acock. Bella Dayton, senior in the ninth spot, stands in. Wow. Off the top of the backstop padding and a wild pitch thrown by Acock. I don't think this one's going to be scored a pass ball. Just not even close. You see where Wong is set up, low and away, and that just flies over her head. Just no feel right now for some reason. I think we might have a pitching change with Kenny Gajewski. This season, the Virginia Tech transfer in her second year with a 1 0 count against Bella Dayton. Rosenberry will bounce one in the dirt. It kicks away. Wong couldn't handle it. Another wild pitch, and Maloney's up to third. So two wild pitches by two pitchers in the same at bat. <laughs> when you have another pitcher that likes to throw more down the zone with Rosenberry with her drop ball as well as her curve. And so if you're Texas and you're on the base pass, you're going to be looking for balls that are in the dirt. Looked like maybe the the umpire at third base, he held his hand out and actually we're gonna have timeout call by the first base umpire, potentially an illegal pitch called or a timing violation. Chad Steers, he held out his left arm. An illegal pitch would be a ball either way, as would a timing violation. 3-0 is low, four pitch walk. Two pitchers, two wild pitches, four balls. And Texas has walked four times, one time through the order. So Rosenberry, you know, predicament. Leadoff batter, Caden Henry. That is ball one. With two drop ball pitchers and with a low strike zone and with an emotional atmosphere, there's going to be some unrest in this game. You can already sense the tension when any close pitch does not go Oklahoma State's way. Can these pitchers and coaches keep their cool? Check swing foul from Henry, one and two. These conference games just get so intense and the teams know each other well. They have a lot of history, not just in the Big 12, but you've seen it the past couple weekends and you'll see it in April. Just so much meaning behind every pitch, behind every game, behind every moment. Henry the chopper, oh. two third and foul. Still one and two. This has been an emotional series over the last few years. We saw some of it in the open. These teams played in the Super Regionals in 2021 at the Women's College World Series in 2022, where Texas eliminated Oklahoma State, winning two games on Elimination Monday. Go right down to second. Dayton will steal the bag. Long did not want to throw it through with Maloney at third. Texas puts two in scoring position.
It was this matchup a couple of years ago at the Big 12 tournament that saw Mike White ejected, in fact. There's a nasty dropper to get Henry swinging. Long applies the tag to be sure. Well, hang on now. Chad Steers is pointing at the circle again. I think he's called another illegal pitch. That would have of just big technical umpire changes already in this game with the runner leaving early the challenge and now you can see at third base chad steers call it i'm not exactly sure what she is doing illegal so it's three and two got out of short Bloodworth to the plate and she gets maloney one through back to third date was safe there but megan bloodworth aggressively decisive yeah. innings. So here's Mia Scott. Dayton at third, Henry at first. Scott takes ball one. Wow, well, we could have a highlight reel of wildness and weirdness already. We'll cover a full minute. Wong throws through to third. Texas once again is going to have a runner at first, take second. Caden Henry with an uncontested steal. So second and third, one out on the second stolen base of the inning. Scott will make great contact. Will make contact there and loop it just outside the third base back. We've talked about how good Texas's offense has been this year, and it was really telling to me to look at their numbers from February and then look at their numbers from March. And one of the biggest differences in their offense was their, their average with runners in scoring position, almost 80 points higher in the month of March at a 430 clip entering this series. So they hit 353 with runners in scoring position in the month of February. They upped that to 430 in the month of March. When you looked at their overall team batting average and their overall OPS in those months, they stayed about the same. But in the month of March, Texas has been a little bit more clutch with runners in scoring position. Scott got a piece of it down to third. Edwards goes to first. Play at the point. Dayton is safe. And Texas ties the game. Wong is going to slap the tag on just to make sure that Scott touched the plate. Chelsea Clark says she did. And Texas ties it on a ground out for Mia Scott. Again, this is where the speed plays such a big part in Texas's game. Bella Dayton got a great read. As soon as she saw Talon Edwards let go of that ball to throw to first, she takes off, read it perfectly to tie up this game. What's the right play there for Edwards? to look her back and make sure that she's committed to getting back or even a potential play is to fake the throw to first base, knowing that Texas is an aggressive team on the base pass, kind of pump the throw to first, get her to get off in third a little bit more. Jolie Mitchell with a chopper to Godwin at first, and that will end the third. Last two games on ESPN, all four streaming on the ESPN app. Look, there are a lot more great players than just those four, but those are Four of the absolute headliners in the game. After a terrific weekend of women's college basketball, the Sweet 16, the Elite Eight, which is the final four this weekend. Talon Edwards, followed by Carly Godwin and Caroline Wong, 2 3 4 for Oklahoma State. 1 1 our score. Cowgirls with four hits, Longhorns with four walks. Edwards, one of those four hits in the first against Sitlali Gutierrez. It's down the line and left, and Bella Dayton has the first out. Charlie Godwin had one of those three first inning singles for Kenny Gajewski. Freshman in the one and three spots for Oklahoma State. Davis and Godwin, they are roommates as well, very close 
I love what Kenny said to us. I love talking to Kenny because he'll tell you what he thinks. He says, look, they still do some boneheaded things, but they're really, really good. And they're playing big positions. Godwin's at first base, but been great. Davis, who was a shortstop her whole life, has been moved to second base. And he did not think necessarily that either Davis or Goodwin would hit like this right out of the gate in their careers. Ooh, that pitch is nasty. That's that off-speed curveball that you see Godwin be out in front of that pitch, and she gets a swing and miss. And that's something that you haven't seen Oklahoma State do very much in game one and game two is swing and miss. It seems like the strikes that they've had have been foul balls or balls put in play or strikes that were taken. Not a lot of swing and misses from them. But they broke. Gutierrez mixing speeds with those last two pitches. A strikeout swinging of Godwin. It's that off-speed curveball that she likes to throw and got her back-to-back -back pitches on that off-speed curveball. Comes in at about 61, 62. Her off-speed drop ball drops down like a changeup to about 55. Three different speeds that she'll throw. Up the middle from Caroline Wong. Nice pick by Martinez. Well, a five-pitch second inning and eight-pitch third inning for Sitlali Gutierrez. We'll talk with Kenny Gajewski when we come. Game, Kenny, it's been, it seems a pretty emotional environment. Uh, how do you feel like your team is handling this environment? Yeah, I mean, I think we're playing well. I mean, I feel like the pressure's on them. I mean, we're out here just playing free, and they're the number two team in the the country. So, uh, hey, we're just enjoying being over here and just playing good softball and just enjoying this um, unreal crowd. Coach, with Sitlali Gutierrez throwing three different speeds with that off-speed curveball and her off-speed drop, what's the message to your hitters to barrel some things up? Well, the, uh, the the message was really good the first two innings. It wasn't so hot the uh, last one, but hey, you just got to pick a speed. You got to pick a spot and go. And our kids are swinging the uh, bat well. We got four hits. We little bit unlucky there in that inning where we had those three hits that were hit really hard, but we just, uh, they were hit right at them. So uh, we'll get it going here. There's a lot of game left. Two good teams. I imagine it's going to be a great one to uh, sit around and watch. We'll enjoy doing that. Thanks for being with us, Kenny. Oklahoma State head coach Kenny Gajewski. Four straight trips to the World Series for him. Really enjoying coaching this young OSU team. Made the switch to Ivy Rosenberry after eight batters and one pitch for Kyra Aycock. So one time through the order for a starting pitcher, and now it's Rosenberry. Allowed an inherited run to score. Reese Atwood, the nation's leader in RBIs, leads off of the fourth inning for Texas. 52 RBIs in 32 games. And I think her batting average in February for a while was like 650, 600, over 500. I mean, the February that she had was probably one of the best Februaries ever at Texas softball, maybe one of the best Februaries of any softball player in Division I. And she goes the other way here for a leadoff base hit. Ups that 408 average with Texas's first hit tonight. Mike White's going to bring in a pitch runner for her. Atwood will momentarily take a seat here in the fourth inning. Looks like Adea Wallace is the pitch runner for Texas. Two steals, three tries on the year. Strike one to Vivi Martinez. So Texas has had the leadoff batter reach three of the first four innings. And Martinez with a ground ball to second, sucked up by Davis on the first. Bloodworth, a double play. Four, six, and three. 
And that's the beauty of having a drop ball pitcher in the circle is that when you get a runner at first base after that leadoff hit, you instantly have a chance to throw one pitch and get two outs. 4-6-3 double play for Oklahoma State. That was smooth. And Ivy Rosenberry likes to keep the ball on the ground with her drop ball and curve. And off of her glove this time, Rosenberry deflects a ground ball off the bat of Washington, and it ricochets in the left field for a base hit. And I noticed this in the Clearwater tournament as well when Oklahoma State was playing in February, and she was pitching. A lot of ground balls come right back at her. She likes to work the outside corner with her drop ball, and that gets a lot of ground balls to be hit right back at her. An unfortunate bounce just off of her glove. It's that instinct as a pitcher, you want to go for it, but knowing, ah, if I let it go, could my shortstop have come across the middle and made that out? Would have been, would have been iffy. Second base hit of the inning now, ball one to Katie Stewart. Another well, freshman standout. Stewart's got a 485 on base percentage, which is the fourth best mark of the team. That goes to show you the depth of this lineup. She's putting up freshman All-American numbers, and she's batting seventh. Mike White told us he sensed a big weekend coming for Katie Stewart. Had to miss a couple of games recently, or her grandmother passed away recently. We're sending our best wishes to Katie and to her family. It's her 30th game of the year, so she's missed three of Texas's games. Had a 15-game hit streak recently, 19 in a row on base. Chase a strike two here. She can hit the ball a mile. Katie Stewart and Carly Godwin actually remind me a lot of each other. They're both really strong, they're athletic, they move well, can hit for a lot of power. Godwin, of course, a freshman. Stewart, a freshman. Rosenberry walking off the field with this one, thinking that she was going to get the called strike, does not get the call, and good eye by Katie Stewart to see that one a little bit off the plate. Back in on 3-2. Ivy Rosenberry got eight outs her last outing Tuesday against Missouri State. Seven were strikeouts. And she does not have a strikeout in relief here. She puts Stewart on. Her second walk in Oklahoma State's fifth as a staff. That is one shy of a season high. Walks allowed by Oklahoma State. Brings up Maloney. And there's strike one. Oklahoma Texas. State pitchers walk six against LSU February 17th. So Texas has been awfully patient so far. They've been patient and they've been a, a good hitting team at specifically hitting drop balls. They saw a lot of drop balls last night from Lexi Kilfoyle as well as Kyra Acock who started this game and now Ivy Rosenberry. So knowing they're going to see a lot of drop balls, I've looked up that stat to see how Texas has hit against drop balls and they've hit drop balls very well. 407 batting average coming into the series, one of the best in the country against hitting drop balls, but no runs last night, just the one run that they have tonight and a couple of hits. But Texas does a good job seeing that drop ball and making a pitcher bring it more up in the zone, taking that pitch when it starts to bleed out. Two strike pitches high, long throws through to second. Almost had Washington. And one of the Texas trainers is going to check on Alyssa Washington after that lunge back into the bag. Good job, 
sneaky throw by Wong, and I think I do think that that tag was a little bit late as Rosie Davis's glove went down to the ground first, and then to Washington tries to sell it. That throw was perfect, but because her glove hit the ground instead of moving into Washington, I think it is what caused her to be able to get back safely. A 2-2. Just got a piece. Caroline Wong has a cannon for an arm. She has been a great addition. Catcher from Liberty. Using her graduate transfer year here at Oklahoma State. That one chopped to the left side, outside the line foul. Well, and I think they, you're, you're dead on again, Kevin. I mean, Caroline Wong has the experience and the leadership back behind the plate, and albeit with a different team, she still is a player who has played that position, has a lot of innings under her belt and her collegiate career back there behind the plate. When you have just such a young infield, Megan Bloodworth has not played shortstop. Talon Edwards was out in left field last year and then freshman on the right side. Another one chopped, this one fair, and this one looped high by Rosenberry. Couldn't get a clean throw off to first. Maloney beats it out. Texas loads the bases. And the speed strikes again. We talked about it in the first inning. If their power has maybe gone away a little bit for a couple of games, Texas can rely on their speed to make things happen. Good hustle by Ashton Maloney to get down the line so quickly. Her, her foot clearly beats the throw. Saw that ball down on the ground, put her head down, and ran her hardest to get down to first base. And Texas making things happen down here at the bottom of their lineup. Encouragement from Carrie Eberly to Ivy Rosenberry. Base hit, the Horns third of the inning. We talked about all the drop ball pitchers on staff for Oklahoma State, and Carrie Eberly was a drop ball pitcher herself, so I'm sure very comfortable with calling pitches for pitchers that like to work more down the zone and change speeds a bit too. Pitchers can have a lot of confidence with what she's calling. It's still bizarre for me to see Carrie Eberly in the circle as a coach. It feels like it was just yesterday when she was leading Oklahoma State to the World Series. It was only three years ago. Rosenberry now one of her pupils as she delivers ball one to Bella Dayton. In fact, Carrie Eberly and Ivy Rosenberry both started their careers at Virginia Tech. Both transferred to Oklahoma State. And here they are, intertwined in this fourth inning. <laughs> Bella Dayton, a tough nut to crack in the ninth spot. On base percentage is a staggering 519. 19 walks and seven strikeouts. She is in the very short conversation for best nine hitters in the country. A terrific senior. Dayton with a slow ground ball to shortstop. Bloodworth will get her at first. Rosenberry gets out of it. A little love from her pitching coach, Everly, and a ground ball ends the inning. Texas coach Mike White will give us his. Has retired the last five. What do you make of the way she's improved over the course of this start? Well, she's uh, got some nerves out of the way. Obviously, they came out and hit the ball pretty hard there that first innings and were able to come unscathed. Just one run, really, considering uh, how they started. But right now, she's settled down a little bit using some off speed and, um, you know, keep a good location. So I like what she's doing. Coach, in these two games, your hitters have seen a lot of drop ball, a lot of down in the zone. What would you like to see from them uh, and their ABs? Well, you know, we had seven hits last night, and uh, we've had, a, you know, we've started to see the ball a little bit better tonight. But I mean, uh, obviously, they're excellent uh, pitching staff, and they've got a great fielding team, so it's hard to get it away. But you know, we've got to get up in the box maybe a little bit and get that ball a little bit earlier and uh, before it breaks. Mike White, always appreciate your time. Best of luck tonight. Hey, thank you. Hook him. Mike White's Texas team has had runners on. One for seven, though, with runners in scoring position. But 
Oklahoma State's only one for four, so Salali Gutierrez did a nice job since giving up some rocket hits in a first inning run. 1-1 one, one game, game two of three. Oklahoma State won five nothing yesterday in the opener. Cowgirls looking to take the series. Longhorns looking to even it up for game three tomorrow. Claire Tim leads off against Gutierrez. Sophomore who leads the Cowgirls with 12 multi-hit games. Her sack flies accounted for Oklahoma State's only run. Gutierrez has just been so efficient after that first inning. The first inning she threw 28 pitches, and then the second, only five pitches, and then the third, just eight. That is the first ball three of the night thrown by Sitlali Gutierrez. Comes to her 14th batter. <laughs> oh, nice season Claire Timms had. Kenny Gajewski said it's almost like you forget about her at times. She needs so little maintenance it's wild. Kid who never has a bad day. Only started three games last year. She's played in every game this season. She started all but two. She has just her fifth walk of the year. Oklahoma State's got a leadoff base runner. Kayla Ward steps in. Reached on an error at short her first time. How cool was this? Um, how cool was it in their midweek game? She hit a home run at Kevin and her dad caught it out in left field. Almost as if like he had up a sign that said hit it here and it went straight to him. But not a softball baseball glove for the catch. That's the beautiful that. thing. He, he didn't have to shift at all. No. <laughs> Bill Wark is Michaela's father, one of four sisters. Sister Maya, who plays softball at North Texas, redshirted her freshman year at Kansas, was injured, transferred to Oklahoma State last year. And you know, at the World Series. That ball had some weird English on its foul. At the World Series, when you hit a home run, World Series attendant to retrieve the ball and bring the ball back to your family. And here, Michaela just brought the ball herself to her family. <laughs> Pretty special moment in her sixth home run of the year. She had her seventh last night. I mean, of all places, like, I, I just can't get over her dad did not have to move at all. And he didn't even have to, like, find the fence behind him and go back and, like, reach. Like, he just stood there, and it came right to him. 3-2. That is a call. Third strike. Down to the inside corner. Gutierrez has her second strikeout. It's like a higher drop ball that's up in the zone that not only has over the top rotation but moves in toward work a little bit. Sitlali Gutierrez gets a call off the plate and gets work to take this pitch, thinking that it's too far inside. Instead, she gets a looking K. It's the opposite corner this time to Katie Lott. It doesn't work this way. You can't just throw out one outing, but. Gutierrez really has had one bad outing this year. Her numbers are very good as are. 120 ERA. You take away the Houston game, she gave up four runs, three homers in a third of an inning on March 8th. She'd be well below one with her ERA. Two start since have been very good. Five shutout innings, one hit, no walks against BYU. Four and two thirds, one earned at UCF. Going to Dandy tonight. 
I think her best game was in our Clearwater ESPN Invitational Tournament in February against Tennessee. She pitched an absolute gem. Texas would go on to win that game and beat Tennessee. Maybe the best game of her career was that game against Tennessee. Mike White told her after the Houston game, you know, champions reframe, great players reframe. He said, you were lights out against Tennessee. You'd never give anything away. And you look nervous against Houston. You can't be nervous. You can't be afraid in this game. Use the example of Michael Jordan, who would miss a ton of shots, but was never afraid that he was going to miss his next shot. And based on what we've seen the last three starts, it looks like Sitlali Gutierrez has taken that advice to heart. She has reframed beautifully in Big 12 play. Another full count, three and two for Lott. Well, and I think it's even reframing your nerves, Kevin, because every player, or I would say a majority of the players, I can't speak for every single one, but you're going to feel nerves. You're going to feel butterflies before a game. It means that it matters. It means that you care, but you can turn those nerves into something great, power through them and overcome them, or you can let them get the most of you. Wicked speed and spin there to strike out Katie Lott. And I think that Sitlali Gutierrez, especially this year, not being a freshman anymore, being a sophomore, having more experience, understanding the game, has been able to take control of those nerves more times than not. Gets Katie Lott swinging on that off-speed curveball. You saw Stewart set up outside. that kind of stayed on the inside corner, but fooled her completely on the inner half. That's just the third Swing and miss for an Oklahoma State batter tonight. They've all been on that off-speed curve. Strike one here to Megan Bloodworth. Stablis had a hard drop ball early, and now Gutierrez is going into the bag of tricks. Ludwig just got a piece. Yeah, throwing that pitch definitely more these past couple innings, the second time through the order. Almost seemed like she was trying to save that pitch the first time through. Now, Patty Ruth Taylor, the new pitching coach and assistant on the Texas pitching staff, is actually calling pitches this year, which have been the duty of Mike White for years upon years when he was a head coach at Oregon as well. Left side, Bloodworth. Down to Scott at third. That ends the inning. Gutierrez has cruised since the first. This game is still well up for grabs as well on the ESPN app. 1-1 our score, Texas and Oklahoma State. The fifth inning in the middle game of three. Kevin Brown, Amanda Scarborough, our ESPN2 crew. Another classic, perhaps, in the making between these two Big 12 rivals. A ground ball chopped to the left side by Caden Henry. Talon Edwards throws her up. And Ivy Rosenberry gets the leadoff hitter, Henry, who is 0 for 2 with a walk. Now batting the third baseman, number 10, Mia Scott. Rosenberry came on in relief in the third inning, so she's thrown two and a third. And Scott drops a butt foul. Oklahoma State pitchers have walked five and only struck out one. However, they've pitched around a whole lot of traffic. Texas is only one for eight with runners on base. When Texas hitters do a good job of putting the ball in play and have shown patience at the plate, drawing a lot of walks too, there's quite a few hitters all throughout their order who have more walks than strikeouts. To second base, Davis from her knees, can't get it off in time, throws it away. Long's there to back it up. That will be an infield single for Mia Scott on base for a second time. And 
leave it up to a player like Mia Scott to be the one to make something happen here for Texas. Love watching her play throughout her career. She's just so dynamic, but unpredictable. So much speed and mix of power. Steal bases. Took a big lead here, but not an early lead, which we saw Mia Scott take in the first inning. She was called out for leaving early on an RBI double by Jolie Mitchell. The result of the play, Scott was out, delayed dead ball. Mitchell struck out a couple of pitches later. Texas did not score in the inning. So Mitchell is technically 0 for 2, even though she blasted an RBI double into the gap because of the runner leaving early, which has stood the test of time as one of the most significant moments, maybe the most significant moment of the game. Only Texas player to strike out has been Mitchell, and she goes down a second time. And that's the first for Rosenberry. And Alley leading into that Oklahoma State series. Against Kelly Maxwell, a no doubter off of her bat over the left field wall, and just such classic games every time. These two teams meet up. But that's when I think that you started to feel like Reese Atwood was going to be a special player for Texas offensively when she did that in Big 12 play with those three back to back to back walk off hits, wanting to be the one in the big situation, game on the line, late in the game, doing it for her team. Atwood crushes one in the left field. Oh, my. That is an uncommon bit of exit velocity off the bat of Reese Atwood. The only good news for Rosenberry is it stayed in the park. Being able just to hit more zones this, this year, Reese Atwood is. Being better on the outer half, being better to use more toward the middle of the field. A lot of her home runs are not just pull home runs anymore. anymore. She likes to use the middle of the field. By the way, coming into the game, she was a 607 hitter with two outs. She's one for two tonight. So her batting average with two outs has plummeted to 600. 18 for 30 in two out situations. Two on, two out Martinez. With a ground ball dug out to Davis, and he is over. Once again, Oklahoma's. Uh, seeing Kelly Maxwell in the mix of this OU Texas series for the first time. Of course, she was at Oklahoma State, has a lot of experience pitching against OU as a cowgirl, but now she's wearing OU colors and will be pitching against Texas in a different uniform. So, interesting. Yeah, that was the biggest news in the offseason for Oklahoma State. Biggest news in the sport, Kelly Maxwell transferring from Oklahoma State to Oklahoma in the offseason. Between that and Jordy Ball transferring out of Oklahoma and to Nebraska. Anderson tries to bunt and she offered one and two. Uh, Kenny Gajewski, as he always is, was, was rather honest about it. It was obviously a very emotional goodbye for Kelly Maxwell, who had a graduate year. A couple of different teams were in the mix, ends up at Oklahoma. Those teams will face each other to end the regular season in what will be maybe one of the most emotionally charged bedlams ever. First Sunday night baseball matchup of the season coming up in a couple of days, the Cardinals and the Dodgers. The Shohei Show takes Dodger Stadium. Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, and the rest at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Sunday night countdown. Baseball tonight starts at 6 Eastern. Five Central, also ESPN Deportes and ESPN Radio. Sorry, I had to talk baseball briefly, man. I can't go four and a half innings without it. <laughs> two and two for Anderson here. They've come out of the game defensively and has re-entered to bat. Not a 
first set is a fair ball and an out. Just right kind on the, of the, the consistency of Oklahoma that has just continued to amaze me in all facets of the game. I mean, they lost that one game. They broke up their 71 game win streak. They lost to Louisiana. But the way that they recover after a loss, the way that they string wins together, the way that they might not play their best, but they still can dominate a team and find different ways to win is impressive because you saw Texas's stats. Texas has great stats this year in the circle, up with the plate, but they still have the four losses. And th that's nothing to be ashamed about at all. They have a great record, 20 and four. They're ranked number two in the country for a reason. Or even a team like LSU who went undefeated for so long and then lost four straight games after that. So when you look at the consistency of winning and excellence that a team like OU is able to put together. It's just what stands out to me every time, along with their gaudy stats and home runs and batting average and runs per game. Rosie Davis to the right side. Washington from an E retires her. That's what Winning Mike White is, is trying to find, right? Consistency. Yeah. I mean, and he's had he's, great recruiting classes the past couple of years as well with the freshman class and the sophomore classes and then also has utilized the transfer portal really well. And it seems like when you look at Texas's roster this year, I've heard a lot of coaches talk about it, just top to bottom, how deep this roster is and talented. And you start to compare them with the numbers that they're putting up and the recruiting classes that they're getting to the likes of Oklahoma. But Oklahoma has raised the standard for the Big 12, has raised the standard for Texas, has raised the standard for the country in terms of how to play the game and the level that everybody else needs to get up to. Talent Edwards fouls it away. We talk about this all the time. The talent level in the game has grown. Parity in the game has grown. Every year it feels like there are a ton of teams that could make the World Series. It doesn't feel like anybody can win the World Series though, because Oklahoma is still standing in the way. Edwards up the middle, there's a base hit. Talon Edwards, two for three, each of the first two games of this series. She just found different ways to get it done. She snuck in a single down the third base line. She sneaks in this single now straight back up the middle to Gutierrez and also hit that towering home run to right center field in last night's game. So just continues to find a way to get on base and make the most out of her ABs. Remember, Talon Edwards enrolled at Oklahoma State a year early. She should be a freshman right now. She's a sophomore, 17-year-old kid. Last year, as Ken Agassi said, 17 years old, running around like there's nothing to lose at her best. So that ball was tipped foul by Godwin. So you have an early enrollee, should be a high school senior last year, helps lead her team to the World Series. Now a position change goes from the outfield down to third. It's a lot to put on someone's plate. She has handled it very, very well. for Carly Godwin. Edwards the runner at first. Godwin a base hit in the first. Struck out on an off-speed curveball away from her in the third. The Gutierrez go back outside. Yes, she will, but she leaves it up. And that, that pitch just spins like crazy. Sometimes it moves a little bit more up. Sometimes it kind of has some backdoor movement to it. Other times it just works like a true curveball. It is spinning absolutely like crazy. 3-2, she won't throw it here. Would you go back to it? 
after I'd going go down and in. in? Yes. So if you're Godwin, you're thinking, boy, I might get another one of those. I'm thinking What's right she side. Do with it? Fly ball in the left field. Got it off the end of the bat. Big swing, short result. Gutierrez has in this middle game between the Big 12 rivals. Sad to say that this is going to be their last regular season meeting this weekend as Big 12 rivals with Texas off to the SEC. This has become one of the best rivalries in college softball. Texas leads the series 41-33. Oklahoma State had won five in a row. Texas had won five in a row after that for Oklahoma State's win last night. And the Cowgirls trying to make it two straight as Alyssa Washington rounds out to third to start the sixth against Ivy Rosenberry. Now adding the catcher, number 20, Amy Stewart. Katie Stewart with a pop out and a walk. Texas has five hits and five walks. Oklahoma State has five hits and only one walk. Longhorns have left seven, Cowgirls five. It's been just hard for Texas to elevate anything because of the drop balls that they've been facing this week. Like see Kilfoyle just pitched incredible last night. Shut out Texas, Oklahoma State won 5-0. It was Texas's first time that their offense had been shut out all year long. And you think about how impressive it is the way that Lexi Kilfoyle has just stepped into that, that ace role. Came from Alabama where she was pitching on a staff with a big name like Montana Fouts. And then she came over to Oklahoma State and pitched with a big name in Kelly Maxwell. Was kind of always that number two and owned that role, accepted that role, thrived in that role. So becoming the ace this year, She's been able to thrive in a new role and pitch like an All-American and just be so stingy, hardly giving up anything, especially when she starts games. Relief outings have been a little bit different for her as she starts to warm up in the bullpen, but has been so reliable, sharp, and has truly been the ace of the staff this year. Down to third, that ball grabbed by Edwards. Is it fair? No. Chelsea Clark, the home plate umpire, Rules it foul. Well, you did see Lexi Kilfoyle throwing loosely in the bullpen, just in case. Davis had sat down to a knee, and Davis's throw is wide. It was a good pick, but Rosie Davis throws it away. Katie Stewart is aboard with one out in the sixth. And up going down to her backhand and then having to pop up after she went down to her knees to keep that ball in the dirt. And that throw just a little bit wild, trying to rush it. Katie Stewart runs well now, uh, down the line. Ruled an infield single. Sixth hit for Texas, and now Maloney takes ball one. Mike White called Ashton Maloney his unsung hero last season. 382, 415 on base. Started almost every game. Sean Bunt again. There's a strike. Numbers are even better this year. 403, 457 on base coming in. She has reached base twice tonight. Again, Maloney squares to butt, knocks it foul. Nothing like having a hitter hitting over 400 in the eight hole, huh? I mean, the, nut, the batting averages for this starting lineup for Texas are just incredible in the 400s, 300s, nobody batting in the 200s who started this game offensively. Oh boy. Oh, 
Eagles tatted Ivy Rosenberry. On a 2 2 fought foul. Maloney is a really good two strike hitter. Seven straight games with a hit, 10 of her last 11. Trying to advance Stewart with one out. That one's down and out. Put together such a good at bat. I mean, she's taking these pitches on the outer half, but to me, they, they do look a little bit off the plate. And that I can see how, if, you know, you're a fan watching the game from a just really big angle, that might look like a strike, but. Stewart's on the run, slow ground ball to Edwards, has no play at first, has no play at second. Stewart just got the left hand in there, and Maloney reaches base for a third time. That is such a heads-up play by Talon Edwards to understand just how the play developed. That was just such a slow hit ball to her, not going to have the play at one, so tries to get Katie Stewart venturing off a second base, and it looked like that was so close. That throw was perfect. It led Rosie Davis into the tag. Whew. It was a close call for Texas. Go and run it second. One out. Bella Dayton back to Rosenberry. She will go to first and get the 0 for 12 in her last four games. Stewart and Maloney, the runners. Rosenberry with a poison dart for strike one. Well, and Caden Henry has to expect the pitch right there. That's where Lexi Kilfoyle pitched her last night, low and away with their drop ball, and that's where Rosenberry has been pitching her. And that pitch was a little bit more elevated. You see Caden Henry see that that pitch was up, out over the plate, took a big swing, and really Rosenberry got away with one right there. Likely going to set up the outside corner with the drop ball right at the knees, a little bit off the plate, trying to get Henry to chase or swing and miss. A ground ball to the left side, it gets past Edwards, and Bloodward's throw is not in time. A two-strike base hit for Caden Henry. Gives Texas, finally, the lead. And Megan Bloodward, the shortstop for Oklahoma State, has been playing more up the middle of the field. You see the big shift on. Talon Edwards is playing off the line. So that ball, which is perfectly placed to the Oklahoma State big shift, great job of Caden Henry to just put the ball in play with two strikes. That pitch was a little bit elevated. She was able to put it in play and score a run. Here's Scott right back to the circle. What an atmosphere here at Cowgirl Stadium. 1,605 fans packed into this place. The second largest attendance in the 25-year history of this stadium. Only Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, and over 1,700 last year surpasses it. All here on a Friday night, temperature in the 60s. Wind heading out toward the outfield. That hasn't really mattered much. There have been so many ground balls in the game. These fans have been treated to another terrific game. Number two, Texas, leading number 10, Oklahoma State, 2-1. And for the first time tonight, Sid Lolly Gutierrez is pitching with the lead. He's facing Caroline Wong, the leading home run hitter for OSU. Wong grounds a 2-0 pitch foul. Along with 10 home runs in her first and only Cowgirl year. An amazing person to add, amazing player to add for Kenny Gajewski. Home runs in three of her last four games. She swings through that off-speed spinner from Gutierrez. Such a unique pitch for Sit Lolly to be able to spin that pitch in, take some miles an hour off, and is really full hitters, especially for Oklahoma State tonight. That's been the only pitch that they've swung and missed at, as you pointed out. Yeah. 
45 home runs in the career of Caroline Watt. 15 a season ago, 10 this year. And she will go down swinging at a 3 2, and that pitch was caught. It never hit the dirt. So the run down to first does not matter. It's a four strikeout for Sidlali Gutierrez. Changing speeds again. That pitch just spins out of her hand, and instead of spinning a little bit up or away, it even moves a little bit down. Great spin on that pitch for Sidlali. A dart for a strike to Claire Tim, all in one. Only Oklahoma State run of the game. Bases loaded, one out in the first. Tim had a sack fly. Tim with a slow ground ball to Washington, and two up, two down here in the sixth inning for Sidlali Gutierrez. Was a terrific high school pitcher. Was a terrific high school everything. She was a basketball player in high school. She played tennis. She ran cross country, track and field. She was a cheerleader and a softball player. Sidlali Gutierrez. Outstanding freshman year last season and even two ERA through a five inning no hitter against Texas Southern. Your two has been another step forward. Ninety pitches in she'll face Michaela work for a third time. Well, Texas returned every pitcher from last year 100% of its innings. It's hard to break out on a staff that's this good and that added Tegan Kavan, but Gutierrez has found her way as good as anybody in this five person staff. Well, and it's maybe Mike White says the deepest pitching staff that he's had at Texas, and I think that you could probably give this staff the nod and the award for that because of all the different looks that they have too. So this is a staff that has a lot of pitchers that you can rely on, but they all have different looks. They all complement each other. Scott from third throws out work. Gutierrez has another one, two, three inning. She has been fifth in the nation in slugging percentage, 15th in home runs per game. They're winning it with small ball. 2-1 Texas looking to even this three game series and Ivy Rosenberry throws Ball one to Jolie Mitchell. And all eight Texas hits have been singles, and this is a team that hits for a really high slugging percentage, generates a lot of extra base hits, home runs. Popped up to the right side by Mitchell. It's Tim in from right field. Reminder that our next featured NWSL matchup tomorrow in Kansas City. Kansas City current hosting Angel City FC, Kansas City and LA. Go to battle at 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central, ESPN and ESPN Plus. Also streaming on the ESPN app. Current looking to stay undefeated to start the year. So Texas, seven hits yesterday, eight today. It's been a singles affair. They did not have an extra base hit yesterday. They did not have an extra base hit today. That's only... The second and third times this season. Texas has not had an extra base hit in the game. The other one was their loss to LSU March 12th. One one for Atwood. It's a big swing. She handles up in the zone so well. It was interesting to go back and see how teams have pitched her differently in the month of March seeing more change-ups and also more curveballs at a significant rate. Only saw 13 change-ups in the month of February and entering the series saw 47 change-ups in the month of March. At about the same number of games too. And then same thing when you look at the curveball, the number of curveballs that she's seen has doubled in the month of March. So changing speeds and trying to stay away from her. A lot of power on pitches that are up in the zone. Another ground ball. Bloodworth from shortstop. Looked by Godwin for the out. Now the shortstop. 
Ludworth is going to bat second in the bottom of the seven. Seven, eight, nine for Oklahoma State. Katie Lott to lead off the inning, then Megan Bloodworth. Martinez smokes one to second, and Rosie Davis. So the bottom of the order does that with a 2 1 lead for the nation's number two against the nation's number 10. Katie Lott, two for two with a walk last night. 0 for two tonight. Number seven hitter with a first pitch foul. And that off speed curveball, that slow curveball that Sitlali Gutierrez has been throwing has been what has helped her so much in these late innings that Oklahoma State has been unable to recognize that pitch out of her hand, time it up, and, and hit it hard. The 0 1. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus, a must have for Big 12 fans with the softball and baseball seasons in full swing. More than 450 games available, plus select games for the conference tournaments. If you're a Big 12 fan, you got to have it. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com slash Big 12. Two strikes on the sophomore lot. And fouls one away. Trying to get the timing right here against Sitlali Gutierrez. Who allowed three singles in a row and a sack fly in the first inning. Since then, only a second inning double, a fourth inning walk, and a fifth inning single. 97th pitch of the night coming. And it's outside. When well, they've been unable to string things together, put things together back to back against her, it just seemed like when she had that leadoff walk in the bottom of the fourth, she followed it up with two strikeouts. When she gave up that single in the bottom of the fifth, she followed it up with a fly ball out. Katie Lott really trying to play spoiler here. Only nine hits on the year. Five of those nine have gone for extra bases. A sophomore from Texas. He'll take ball two. Lot Bloodworth, and it'll be Hayden Sokolowski who came in to replace Anderson defensively in the top of the seventh. The 100th pitch of the night is fouled away by Lott, who has spoiled three two-strike pitches with foul balls. And actually, that's not Megan Bloodworth. That, that is Lott. But it's not going to be Bloodworth. Looks like a pinch hitter. Jillian Poulard is on deck. Another one fouled away by Lott. We love to see this at bat put together in the bottom of the seventh inning just to make it tougher on Gutierrez. Put some doubt in the back of her mind that this is going to be an easy one, two, three inning. Maybe make her a little bit nervous. Maybe make her throw some extra pitches and potentially make a mistake more over the plate. The ninth pitch coming. It's beaten into the ground again. Sit bad is the type of a bat that just starts to fuel the fans, starts to fuel your dugout, starts to fuel your own belief in the box that you can make it happen. Pitch number 10 leading off the bottom of the seventh. Lot takes strike three call. Right through the back door for Gutierrez, his fifth strikeout. Just paints the outside corner here with a drop ball. Just hits a spot. I mean, that pitch doesn't even move a lot, but Stewart's glove is a little bit off the plate. She spots it right on the outside corner for a strikeout. Way to battle within that tough at bat by Sitlali Gutierrez. That's a sign right there when you see a pitcher grow up and take it to the next level. A one run game, bottom of the seventh inning, and batter is just not going away against you, and you do not give in. Jillian Poulard, the senior in her first year after four at McNeese, will pinch hit for Bloodworth. Jillian 
Millard 10 for 34 in the year, seven walks, a 432 on base percentage. And she takes a knee high strike. As an all conference player two years ago at McNeese, a lot of extra base hit power. Really walked away from the game last year, but decided to transfer to Oklahoma State for her final season. 0 oh, and 2 for Poulard here. First inning, you said Lolly Gutierrez really needs to change speeds. She has changed speed, she has changed location, she has painted a masterpiece since that rocky first. Just her, her ability that she's gotten better as the game has gone on, and we've seen it with the quicker innings. I mean, that, that first inning was a grind. She threw 28 pitches, and that's when Oklahoma State scored, but after that, she just really hasn't looked back. 2-2. Poulard grounds it to first. Knocked down by Mitchell, who has out number two. Six in a row retired by Gutierrez, who is one step from the finish line. So here's the first at bat for Hayden Sokolowski. Eight for 25 on the year. 357 on base. Does have some extra base power. Sokolowski, as so many Oklahoma State hitters have done, takes a knee high strike. If I'm at Lolly Gutierrez, I'm excited that there's two new hitters in the bottom of the seventh inning that haven't seen me yet. can tell just going right at these two new hitters getting ahead quickly two strikes I mean when I was pitching and a new hitter hadn't faced me I, I, was, I was like great I get to throw whatever I want to in this at bat because this hitter does not have experience seeing the ball out of my hand yet Gutierrez again just looking more like a veteran here late in the game trying to put this game away She's one strike from doing so pitch number 111 Another Texan opposing her, Sokolowski from Flower Mound, Texas. Trying to keep the Cowgirls alive against the Longhorns. The one, two. Chewing and a middle strike three. Set Lolly Gutierrez spins the first. Yo, listen up, let me take you on a journey where dreams are born and souls burn with fury in the depths of our hearts. We hold our desires, but to make them real, we must light the fires. In the face of adversity, we stand tall with courage in our hearts. We'll conquer all through the trials and tribulations. We'll endure for our dreams, we'll fight all that we're sure. Fight for your dreams, let the music play In the rhythm of life, find your own way With every beat of your heart and every step you take Keep fighting for your dreams, don't let them break From the city streets to the starry skies We'll reach for the heavens with determined eyes With perseverance as our weapon and passion as our guide We'll break through barriers, let our dreams collide In the silence of the night, hear the roar of warriors fighting for dreams forevermore for in the battle for our dreams we find a strength in the symphony of life let's go to any length fight for your dreams let the music play in the rhythm of life find your own way with every beat of your heart and every step you take keep fighting for your dreams don't let them break Let the music 
guide you through the storm As you fight for your dreams in every form For in the melody of life, you'll find the truth And in the battle for your dreams, you'll find your youth Yeah, keep fighting for your dreams with all your might in the dance of life, let your spirit take flight For in the end, it's not about the fame But the journey itself, and the fire in your flame